The village of Paston lies on the northeast Norfolk coast. When in 1086, nearly a thousand years ago, King William made the great record we now call the Doomsday Book, the village was called Pastuna. In the village of Paston is the parish church of St Margaret's. The first St Margaret's church was looked after by the monks of nearby Bromham Priory. We can only see the remains of Bromham Priory today because the buildings were pulled down by a later king, Henry VIII. When the monks of the Priory were there, they gave some land at Paston to the Paston family. We think this was because the Paston family claimed to be descended from William de Glanville, who had founded Bromham Priory. The Pastons farmed the land, but then William Paston, a man we call the Good Judge, was sent to be trained as a lawyer. The family was not always popular. For instance, we know from the letters that they wrote that when they built a wall in the village to give themselves a private walk to St Margaret's Church, people were very annoyed because they had to walk further, and so they knocked the wall down. May all the devils in hell draw her to hell for what she has made. William married Agnes de Berry. Their first son, John, is usually called John Paston I because the family kept using the same names, particularly William, John and Clement, over several centuries. His son John became a lawyer for the famous knight Sir John Fastolf, who lived at Caister Castle. When Fastolf died, he left a great deal of land and money to the Pastons. The Pastons now owned land all across north-east Norfolk. They had become very rich. Catherine Paston, from the next generation, has an expensive and beautiful tomb in Paston Church. John Paston married Margaret from the village of Mortby. Margaret is perhaps the most famous of the writers of the hundreds of letters the family sent to each other. It is these letters that continue to make the family well known today. In those years, the men of the family often had to be at court in London. The letters tell us things they had to do there during the time we call the Wars of the Roses. King Henry VI had been a weak king, and there was a great dispute as to which of his relatives should be kings after him. All the lesser courtiers, like the Pastons, wanted to make sure they didn't end up on the losing side. They also had to fight legal battles in court, and sometimes away from the courts, with swords, crossbows and shields, to keep the lands they had inherited in Norfolk. Lord Mullanes said the Pastons had cheated him out of the ownership of Gresham Castle. He sent a thousand men to the castle and threw out Margaret Paston and the few servants she had there. Life for the Pastons was always adventurous. The family had built themselves a great hall in the village of Paston and then they built another huge house at Oxnead. Clement Paston had gone off to sea in the time of Henry VIII to become a famous admiral. Clement's tomb can be seen in the church at Oxnead. As the 17th century, the 1600s, was starting, the then William Paston was wondering what he could do so that people remembered him in the future. He gave lots of money to good causes, and when there was a fire in North Walsham, he took the chance to buy a plot of land in the middle of the town. He paid to start a school there. To the present day, firstly boys and now students of both genders were taught at that school. He also decided he'd like a grand tomb, so he had it built nearly ten years before he died. We can continue to see it in St Nicholas Church in North Walsham today. There were many more members of the Paston family. We can meet them through the huge collection of letters that they left. Robert Paston left us a reminder of the many things he had collected in his lifetime. They are seen in the magnificent picture 
the Paston treasure which hangs in Norwich Castle. Eventually, their fortunes took a turn for the worse and they had to sell much of their land and many of their possessions. Robert's son William was left with scarce a servant to attend him or a horse to ride on. The great days of the Paston family had come to an end. 